Heidi Ho, if you ask a hundred so-called experts on what peak oil production means, you're likely going to get a hundred different answers. Some will tell you that it exists, and we're already there, or at least knocking on the door. And it means profound, if not devastating, consequences for mankind. Other experts might tell you that it doesn't exist at all. It's a farce. What you might call a false flag. Created and propagated to do nothing more than keep the price high at the pump. Others would probably say that yes, it does exist. But not to worry. We won't be seeing it for many many years to come. In this video series, I'm going to try to wade through some of the distortions, separate some of the fact from fiction, and explore some concepts and theories surrounding the issue that have a impact on it. Peak oil production was first introduced in 1956 by a cat named Dr. M. King Hubbard. He was laughed at and scoffed at the time because nobody could imagine such a thing happening. He had predicted that oil production in the United States would peak sometime between 1965 and 1970. It wasn't that he had predicted predicted that the oil would run out, mind you, but rather that it would reach just about the halfway point. M. King predicted that as time went by, the oil companies would be able to produce more and more oil until that halfway point is reached. The problem is, by then, all the easy oil is gone. And from then on, it gets harder and harder and more and more expensive to get the oil out of the ground. As a result, production begins to decline once it reaches that peak point, irreversibly declining. If supply is declining, and demand continues to increase, then you have a real supply and demand problem on your hands. Prices go through the roof, and eventually you have shortages. King turned out to be right after all. Oil production in the U.S. peaked in 1970, right on cue. The only thing he missed at all was the discovery and subsequent exploitation of a large body of oil in Alaska. The Alaskan oil pipeline, an engineering marvel in itself, once carried two million barrels a day. Now it's barely able to transport 860,000. That's because Alaskan oil itself has peaked. Along with Mexico, the North Sea, and a whole lot of other places. The big questions still remain. Do the sum of the parts equal the whole? Will there be a peak production for the entire planet? And if so, when is it coming and how will it affect our individual lives? I'm going to give you a challenge. Some homework will say. Don't worry, there won't be a test or anything at the end. When you get up in the morning, from the plastic in your toothbrush to the foam in your bed pillow tomorrow night, think about everything you touch. How much oil is in it? How much oil did it take to transport it to you? Is it made from oil? Think about these things as you go through the day tomorrow. If you tell someone there's going to be an oil shortage, 
the first thing they think about is long lines at the gas pump. Are they going to be able to get their car filled? But the truth is, only about 47% of all the oil used in the U.S., for example, is used for transportation. The rest of it is buried in everything we use in our ordinary lives. We're actually swimming in this stuff. This so-called embedded oil becomes a big problem when we start thinking about replacing our oil consumption with greener technologies. How much fossil fuel energy, for example, would it take to cover every roof with solar panels? And those big wind turbines, how much oil does it take to construct one and transport it and erect it? It's been estimated that it takes 706 of those big turbines to replace one oil well. If we could all afford it, we could all run out and buy a shiny brand new hybrid car. But it takes just about the weight of a new car in oil to manufacture it. Or let me put it another way. Around 2,340 gallons of gas worth on average. Somebody's figured out for us that to replace all the clunkers in the U.S., it would take just about 584 billion gallons of oil to manufacture the new vehicles. If we're living in a world where oil production is declining, can we afford to invest all of this energy in transforming our economy to a greener way of life? We may be faced with a situation where we've done too little too late. Hopefully I haven't bored you too much with all of these facts and figures. If you follow me to the next episode in this series, We'll start by talking about another kind of investment of oil and how it may play an even bigger role than peak oil itself.